If the birth of the church at Pentecost could be considered the baptism of humanity, when will humanity be confirmed? Dear brothers and sisters, salve Maria. In today's first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, we find the sacrament of confirmation being conferred at the same time as baptism. Paul traveled through the interior of the country and down to Ephesus where he found some disciples. They were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. In the first centuries, like the account we just read, confirmation generally comprised one single celebration with baptism, which is why many Eastern rites of the Catholic Church still confer to this day the two sacraments in the same ceremony. Indeed, these two sacraments are so united that the very name confirmation literally means the strengthening and confirmation of the baptismal grace. For when we were baptized, we received the life of grace. But as with our natural life, this life also needs to mature and be perfected. A very illus fitting illustration of this can be found in the comparison of these two sacraments and the feasts of Easter and Pentecost. As a contemporary Catholic prelate put it, confirmation stands to baptism as Pentecost stands to Easter. So if we look back to the evening of the resurrection, we, we can recall that our Lord appeared to the apostles and breathed on them saying, receive the Holy Spirit. So in that moment, they received the Holy Spirit as do we in our baptism. But as we all know, between Easter and Pentecost, the apostles, though they had the Spirit, had not been strengthened and fortified for the great task ahead. There, there are no stories of mass conversions or public miracles in this time. Then came Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit descended upon Mary, most holy, and the apostles in tongues of fire. And from that moment on, they were completely transformed. The once timid and scared apostles became fearless and ardent advocates of the faith. And so we too, through the sacrament of confirmation, receive the Holy Spirit and His gifts, enabling us to profess our faith boldly as strong and perfect Christians. Now, while we're on the topic of Easter and Pentecost and its similarities to baptism and confirmation, there is another comparison I'd like to draw before we conclude. Professor Plinio Corre de Oliveira once said that the birth of the church at Pentecost could be considered the baptism of humanity. However, 2,000 years later, mankind still awaits this confirmation. A time when the same graces that were bestowed upon Our Lady and the Apostles at Pentecost would be renewed with extraordinary vigor and extended to all humanity. This new Pentecost, which Professor Plinio alludes to, could very well coincide with what St. Louis de Montfort describes as the reign of Mary, and also as the fulfillment of what Our Lady promised in Fatima. In the end, my Immaculate Heart will triumph. And is this not what we pray for every time we pray the Veni Creatur Spiritus? Emite spiritum tuum et creabuntur, et renovabis facem terre. Send forth thy spirit, and they shall be created, and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. So as we prepare for this great feast of Pentecost, let us unite in prayer, following the example of Mary and the apostles, as we await a new Pentecost the confirmation of humanity. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you like this video, press the like button and leave a comment below. 
don't forget to subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell so you won't miss any of our videos.